All right, well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another exciting day of mathematics. Warm-up number 25 is on the screen. Uh, so if you notice, I included a couple more things. Uh, I just want us to practice a couple of things before we get to the next concept that's coming up in a couple of weeks. So please, pretty please, let's see how you do with that. I'll give you some time. And, uh, yeah, copy that and go. All right, here we go. For the sake of time, I'm going to go over number one. If you notice, it's something new I introduced to the warm-up, but it's a uh, skill that we need for what's coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, however, it says simplify to lowest terms. We know how to do that. However, I want it done with this information. Factor each number first. So how can I factor four? Four becomes two times two. How can I factor 6? 2 times 3. Is that correct? Now, if we have multiplication here and multiplication here, then I can simplify using what I call the giant 1. We can identify something that's the same in the numerator and denominator and make a giant 1 because what is 2 divided by 2? 1. And that leaves us with what? 2 thirds. You should have gotten the same thing when you simplified. Is that correct? But I'm giving you a process that we're going to need. Okay? Let's do that now with this. How can I write x squared in factored form? x squared becomes x times x. How about this one in factored form? Well, is there a GCF for both terms? x, yes. And we're left with x minus 2. So, do we have multiplication here and here? Yes, so that means I can use the giant one. Is that correct? This one? There it is. Okay. Can I do that with these two? No, because this is not multiplication. What is this? Subtraction, so we can't. So we're left with x over x minus 2. All right. With that said, factors of number two, what you get for your factors? Uh, Jose. X plus two. X plus six. Hands if you got something like that. That is correct. Pass someone. Jalen, number three, factors of number three. X plus 3. X squared plus 3. Hands if you got that in any order. That is correct. Yes. Let me go to number 4. Number 4, it says to solve for y first. Solve for y. So, let me make some space here. To leave y by itself, I need to subtract, I'm sorry, add 9x. Add 9x to each side. We're left with 3y equals 9x plus 12. And then at the end, we divide by 3, divide by 3. So we end up with y equals 9x divided by 3 is 3x. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay. We're done with the first part, but now I added a little bit more information. It says here what? Evaluate. What does that mean, Mr. Q? That means that we're going to substitute values into the equation. Substitute into the equation. What are we substituting? The domain. And I'm pretty sure you guys remember that, right? What the domain is. Very good. The domain is all x's. All x values. So what x values do they give us? Negative 1. What else? 0. What else? 1. So we're going to substitute all these 3 into what? x right here. So here we go. I'm going to write this three times. Y equals 3 parentheses plus 4. Leave a space. Y equals 3 parentheses plus 4. And Y equals 3 parentheses plus 4. Why three times? Because there's how many values? 3. So what's my first value? Negative 1. So what is 3 times negative 1? Negative 3 plus 4. That is Y equals 1. What's my next value? 
zero. So what is three times zero? Zero plus four, so y equals four. What's my last value? One. So what is three times one is three plus four, that is seven. And that's how you evaluate using the what? Domain. What does domain mean? All x values. All x values. Now, I'm bringing these in because in a couple of weeks, we're going to get started with graphing and functions. So I'm trying to get you guys there little by little. Okay? All right. So, with that said, number five. You're like, oh, come on, Q. This is like elementary stuff. Yes. But I need to go over the process for number five. Here we go. Ready? Now, I presented this to elementary kids, and I'm pretty sure you should be able to do the same if I was able to do it with third graders. Here it goes. What two numbers multiply to give me 15, guys? Five and three, or three times five? Okay. How about six? Two and three, or three times two? All right, so obviously you can see in these denominators, what do they have the same? The three. Okay, however, what does this second denominator need that this first denominator has? Does it need a three? No, what does it need over here? The five, yes. And whatever we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator. We multiply this, isn't this six? And it was missing a five, so we multiply times five, so we did that to the numerator, okay? Look at this denominator. What does it need from over here, over here? The two. And whatever we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator. So, now we can simplify, yes? Let's see. What is two times eight? Sixteen. And this denominator is thirty, yeah? 5 times 3, 15 times 2, 30 plus. How about this one? What is 5 times 5? 25. And the denominator should be a common denominator now that we have the same on both sides. So this is 30. Let's see. 10 times 3, that's 30. Yes. So can we add now? Yes. So the denominator is 30. And we focus on the numerator now. Aww. 16 plus 25 is 41. Very simple, yeah? Now, we're going to be practicing this plenty from this point forward, hopefully till next week, because this is going to become this. Doesn't it look exactly the same? <laughs> You're like, what? Yeah, we're <laughs> same process. We're gonna get there. <laughs> Copy the agenda, please. Warm up number twenty-five, dividing polynomials, synthetic. And your home play for tonight is play sheet six point five C. Same play sheet as last time, but you're gonna do numbers five through twelve, five through twelve only. Okay. I'm sorry. Same play sheet. Yeah, yesterday's home play was numbers 1 through 8, so that means some of the problems you're going to repeat, but today I'm going to give you a different process, okay? So go ahead and go to Canvas, turn that in, please, and then get a Cornell note. All right. So once again, tonight is 5 through 12 only. Okay. And get a Cornell note ready. I'll give you some time. Copy and go. All right, y'all ready? Here we go. I can divide polynomials. I can divide polynomials. Today we're going to finish up with polynomials because we got to move on, guys. Uh, I think we, I don't know if you noticed in the Canvas module, it's like really long now with a lot of assignments, right? All right, so we're going to close that baby up and move on. So today we're still doing division, okay? Do we need a frame model? 
No, we know what they are. All right, so just recap, look up to the screen. Yesterday, I said uh, in elementary, you guys looked at stuff like this, 26 divided by 3, 26 divided by 3, and yesterday we took this and we did 26 divided by 3, but with polynomials, right? So we've been doing this and this. Do you agree? Yeah. What haven't we done? That. That's why I'm giving you plenty of practice before we get there with this. They're like, what? Yeah. I'm going to give you plenty of practice before we get there because we're going to be doing division but in fraction form like this. Okay? So today we're going to finish up with division and something that we call synthetic division. Here we go. Copy this. Example 3. Example 3. And it reads, divide using synthetic division and they give us x cubed plus 7x squared plus 16x plus 12 divided by x plus 2. x cubed plus 7x squared plus 16x plus 12 divided by x plus 2. All right. All right. First, let's set this up, okay? Because I don't want you guys to get all antsy about what we're going to do. Here we go. Synthetic division is just a tiny bit different from what we've been doing. I think it's the easiest way of dividing. So imagine that we are in the matrix and I'm Neo Q. Have you guys seen the movie, The Matrix, some of you? Yeah. Okay, I'm Neo Q and I'm going to take you guys to the matrix. And I'm going to show you on the screen how to do division but without any letters, all numbers. Ready? Here we go. So the first thing's first. Tell your neighbor the first thing. Yeah, standard form, let's check. Three, two, one, zero. Is there anything missing? No. So to start synthetic division, we use coefficients and constants. So what is the coefficient for the first term? And then? And the constant? Hold on before you copy. Is this in standard form? Yes. So therefore, check this out, my divisor, I'm going to set it equal to zero, I'm going to solve, and I'm going to use this as my divisor, negative two, and I'm going to use that to start my process. Copy that really quick, leave a couple, like, couple lines uh, space here so you can have something written in between. I'm going to show you the process, writing utensils down, you can copy right after, I just wanted you to at least write the beginning of it, there it is. So just to recap, we check for standard form, it is, there's no degrees missing, from there we just use the coefficients of this and the constant, there it is. Second one, standard form, we solve, and the divisor we're going to use is negative two. All right, so here we go, here goes the process. The process is we're going to be multiplying and combining as we go. So writing utensils down, look up to the screen. How do we get started? I'm going to take down the very first term, which is 1. So pay attention to this. You'll copy right after. Ready? Here it goes. Negative 2 times 1. That becomes negative 2. I write it above on the next term. From there, I combine these. What is 7 minus 2? 5. I do the process again. Negative 2 times 5. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. I combine those two, and that gives me 6. I do the process again. Negative 2 times 6. What is negative 2 times 6? Negative 12. So what is 12 minus 12? 0. This is my remainder. Zero. Okay, before you copy, 
What did we have first at the beginning? We had a cubic. After we did this process, now it's no longer a cubic. This is a squared. And if this is in standard form, what follows a squared? X. And this is our constant, and this is my quotient. Copy that, please. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, yes, we got this. All right, let's see if we got the process. What is the first thing we check for? Standard form, and then we use all coefficients and constants. Same thing for the second one, but we set it equal to zero and solve, and that's our divisor. We bring down the first term, which was one, multiply, and then we bring that multiplication or the product to the next term above and combine. And we do the same process all the way through. What, it, what we end up with is one degree less from what we started. So we started with x squared plus 5x plus 6. So just to uh, have a closure on this, I want you to put in between these numbers and these numbers the word combination. So like that, you know that when you're going straight down, we're combining. We're combining, yes? Okay. So we multiply like this, but then we combine straight down, okay? From 1 to 5, how comfortable are you with this so far? 4, 4, 5, 4, 5. Okay, let's do another one. Copy this one, please. Example 3 cubed. x cubed plus 5x squared minus 17x minus 21 divided by x minus 3. x cubed plus 5x squared minus 17x minus 21 divided by x minus 3. All right, let's do this one together. First thing we check for is what? Standard form. So let's see. Third degree, second degree, first degree, zero degree. Is it in standard form? Yes. Is there, are there any degrees missing? No. All right, so then I use coefficients. What do I write? One, and then positive five, and then negative 17, and then negative 21. All right, let's look at the divisor. Standard form, 1, 0, yes. So that means we set it equal to 0, and then plus 3 plus 3, x equals 3. So my divisor is 3. All right, let's get our synthetic division started. Bring down the first term. Multiply, what is 3 times 1? 3 times 1 is 3. Now we combine straight down. What is 5 and 3? That's 8. Okay. Multiply again. What is 3 times 8? 24. Combine, 24 minus 17 is 7. From there, combine, uh, multiply, sorry, 3 times Seven, that's 21. What is 21 minus 21? Zero remainder. Okay. So, we started this polynomial with a cubic. That means this is a what? Square. That means the following one is 8x and the following one is 7. This is my quotient. From 1 to 5, how comfortable are you with this? Yeah, five, 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 five. Okay, we got it, right? All right, let me give you another one. You do this one by yourself. Ready? Here we go. Example three, super cube. X cubed plus 8X squared plus 17X plus 10 divided by X plus 5. Yeah. Copy and go. All right, now... All right, so, good communication, very good. All right, process, standard form, three, two, one, zero, yes, so my quotient is one, I mean the coefficient is one, eight, 17, and 10. Uh, my divisor, once you set this equal to zero, this is negative five. So far so good, yes? 
Yeah, because you needed to set it equal to zero and solve. Okay. From there, I'm no longer going to use colors. I'm going to go a little bit faster. Bring down the one. What is negative five times one? Negative five. Combine that three. Negative five times three, that's negative 15. Combine that's two. Negative five times two, that's negative 10. Combine that zero as our remainder. So we started with a cubic. This is a what? A squared plus 3x plus 2. And this is our quotient. Hands, have you got that by yourself? Okay. We good, right? Crank it up a little bit. Yes, copy this one. Example, 3 mega cubed, 7x cubed minus 6x plus 9 divided by x plus 5. All right, let's do this one together. Check for standard form, yes. Let's see. Third degree, first degree, zero degree. What's missing? So put a box there and a two because it's missing and we need it, right? So tell me what to write. Seven and then zero and then negative six and then nine. That is correct. How about the divisor? What is our divisor? Negative five, yes. Okay, let's go a little bit faster now. Bring down the seven. What is negative five times seven? Negative 35. Combine, bring that down. That's negative 35. Fly, my goodness. And they bug. <laughs> See what it is? Fly. And. What is negative five times negative 35? 175. Yes, that is correct. Combine, that's 169. Negative 5 times 169, that's negative 800 and, very good, 45, yeah. But wait a minute. Now we don't get a zero. We get, let's see, negative 845 plus 9, that's negative 836. So, let's see. We started with a cubic. So that means this is a what, everyone? So this is 7x squared, and then negative 35x, and then 169. However, we have a remainder. What do we do? Add a fraction, yes? So what goes on top? Negative 836. What goes underneath that fraction, guys? X plus 5, yes, that is correct. And this is my quotient. Woo! Let's go! What? <laughs> Travel. Alright? From 1 to 5, how come through are you with these? Yeah? Okay, one more just to make sure we got this. Here we go. Copy this one. Example 3 super duper Q. We got 3x cubed plus 22x squared plus 37x plus 10 divided by x plus 5. Do some time for that. Hopefully you can go a little bit faster now. Copy and go. All right, quotient. What'd you get for your quotient, uh, Jessica? Go. Okay, hold on, hold on. 3x squared plus 7x plus what? Plus 2. Hands, have you got that? Looks about right, yes. Okay, double check your work, please. And once again, it was in standard form, so you should have written 3, 22, 37, 10, and then the divisor is negative 5, and the rest is history. Yes? Okay. All right. Uh, don't copy this one. Look up. All right. So you're near the divisor, and what are you going to use for your dividend to start your division? Two, I heard, and then to start our division, what do I use? Twelve. 
and the rest is history, yeah? Okay, all right. Let's crank it up uh, three notches, yeah? Copy this. Step before. Oh, yes. Determine whether the given binomial is a factor of the polynomial, and then it says, if so, find the remaining factors for P of X. Copy the instructions, because you will need them for tonight, and copy that. I'll give you some time. Copy and go. So let's read this to understand what it's saying. Look up to the screen. Here you go. Because you are going to have uh, like four of these. It reads, determine whether the given binomial, look through this, do you see a binomial? Tell me what the binomial is. Yeah, x plus 1. They're asking, determine if the given binomial, that one, is a factor of the polynomial P of X. Do they give us the polynomial P of X? Yes, it's right there. Now, they're not saying that it's an equation and you need to solve. They're saying that this is a given polynomial, P of X. So how do we start, Mr. Q? Well, let's try to ignore this part and we focus here. Does that look familiar? Yes. Okay. So what do we do first? Standard form, fourth degree, third degree, second degree, first degree, zero degree. Is it in order? Yes. Anything missing? No. So tell me what you're right. One. Negative four. Negative six. Four. And five. What's our divisor? Negative one. Right? Okay. All right. Tell me what to do, please. Uh, Valente. Go. Divide by negative one, yes. So what do I do? Tell me what to write or what to do. What do I do with this one? Alexander, help her out. Help him out. Bring the one down. There you go. All right. So what is negative one times one? Negative one. Combine that. Negative five. What is negative one times negative five? Five. Combine that. Negative one. What is negative one times negative one? One. Combine that is five. What is negative one times five? That's negative five. So therefore, our remainder is what? zero. All right, this is what I want you to do. Look up, please, for the remainder. I want you to change the remainder into a different color of zero. If the remainder is zero, pay attention to this part, if remainder is zero, then you point to this and you write, yes, it's a factor. Let me repeat that again. If the remainder is zero, then we go to this and say that it is a factor. So question, what if the remainder was not zero? What would we write? Not a factor. Does that make sense? Yeah? That's Mr. Q. All right. But are we done? No, let me go to the instructions. Let me erase this to read the instructions. It says, determine whether the given binomial is a factor. Did we determine that? Yes. We said it is a factor. Okay. If it is a factor, let me repeat that again. If it is a factor, if so, find the remaining factors. You're like, what? Yeah, that means we need to finish up and continue factoring. So let's see. We started to, uh, with this one, it was to the fourth power. That means this is to the what? Third. So this is x cubed. And then minus 5x squared. And then minus 1x. And then plus 5. Okay. 
How do we factor this, though? Tell your neighbor, please. Everyone, how do we factor this polynomial of four terms? We group, yes, group the first two and the last two. So, GCF for the first two. X to the second, and we're left with X minus 5. What's GCF for the second two? 1, and this is the negative, so it's negative 1. We're left with X minus 5. So what's the same here and here? X minus 5. Okay. What's left over? X squared minus 1. X squared minus 1. Hold on. Don't forget to bring this one down because this one was a factor, right? So I'm going to bring this one down as well. X plus 1. However, is that completely factored out? No. Tell your neighbor what this becomes, please. What does that become? What was the red flag? The squared, right? Can we take the square root of this? How about the square root of this? So this is x plus 1, x minus 1. So difference of squares. Bring down the first factor and bring down the factor that we started with. And these are my factors. Woo! Let's go! Yes? Yeah, so uh, this is all, uh, Mr. Q, come on. Let's just write this correctly. X minus 5, X minus 1, and X plus 1 squared. Yep, we can take that as well. All right, yes? This one? Okay. How come it became what? Because we factored out a negative 1. So watch. Negative 1x divided by negative 1 is positive x. 5 divided by negative 1 is negative 5. Yes? Say it again. If x plus 1 was not a factor, you just stop and write not a factor. You don't do anything else. Yeah, because it says if it is, if so, then you factor. Okay? So let's see. Try one by yourself. Example 4 cubed. Our polynomial factor or P of x is 4x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. And we're going to check to see if x plus 2 is a factor. Copy that and go. You don't need the instructions, but you do need to count five. All right. Good communication. All right. So we don't need this. Dylan, tell me what to write to get started. Negative 2 is a divisor, okay? All right, I'm going to go a little fast. Negative 2 times 4, that's negative 8. Combine, that's negative 5. Negative 2 times negative 5 is 10. Combine, that's 12. Negative 2 times 12, that's negative 24. But we have remainder, negative 23, Michael Jordan. So, if it's got a remainder, what shall we write about this? not a factor. And we're done. You don't do anything else. Why? Because it says, if so, that means if it is a factor, then we continue. So if it's not a factor, then we stop. Yeah? Okay? From 1 to 5, I'll come to bar you with this. Yeah? Yeah, 5, 5, 5. Okay. Your home play for tonight is the same play sheet. It's already on Canvas. Numbers uh, 5 through what? 12 only. Okay? All right, guys, I'm going to stop the video right there. Once again, reminder, oh, today I can't stay for tutoring. 
Uh, so if you need some uh, support, come during lunch. I'll be here. Have fun with your home play. Bye.